On the 6 o'clock show tonight, we're reminiscing about those awkward teenage years with in-betweener star Simon Bird as he talks when's acting and turning his hand to film directing. <laughs> uh, comedian Garold Farrelly is telling us how baking cakes help him stay connected uh, during lockdown. And our TV and movie reviewer, Fanula J, is back with the top picks to keep us entertained. Yes, hello and welcome to Tuesday 6 o'clock show. Now, it's a well-known fact that our show officially signifies clocking off time, OK? So forget your daily toil and sink a little deeper into your armchair. You, just as we're doing. Are you just going to stay like that for the day? It's just that, yeah, well, why not? I mean, let's make use of these chairs Can't that we have. see, I have to come up, I have to come Hi. up. Tonight, we'll be talking to the actor-turned-director who made briefcases cool as Will in The Inbetweeners. Simon Bird will be telling us about his brand-new movie. Uh, comedian Garode Farrelly is filling us in on how he spent lockdown catching up with his fellow comics while also partaking in some very competitive cake-making. <sighs> now, welcome back to the show. We've all dabbled in a bit of bacon to help pass the time in lockdown to varying degrees of success. Yeah, let's not talk about ourselves. Uh, our next guest has taken his hobby to a very competitive level. Garrod Farrelly, how are you doing? Not bad, not bad. And I just have to thank you because you've helped me with a New Year's resolution. Because, see, under that cabinet there, it's the first time that has been cleaned in maybe about 10 years. So I'm <laughs> thanks for that. I'm absolutely delighted with myself. Uh, the power of <laughs> Skype having to go yeah, live I on TV. To God, mm -hmm. listen, my one tidy yeah. corner. Listen, let's go back 12 weeks. Uh, Ireland goes into lockdown. Uh, you have to uh, obviously cancel your tour. No gigs, no places yeah. open. Uh, so why did you decide to pick up the mixing bowl and start baking? <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't my choice. Uh, what happened was um, I, I started to do some Insta Lives because I was getting lots of messages because the, the lockdown happened just a, a couple of weeks before my tour started. So lots of people with tickets were sending me messages the whole time, going, well, what's happening? And at the time, I didn't really know. So just each night, I was just doing an Insta Live where I was just doing a few jokes and saying, well, this is what I think is happening. And then one night, somebody suggested a bake along, and uh, it kind of took off, and we did it. And uh, then they wanted to make it a competition, so I was like, okay. So I got one, my friend is Tom Allen, who is the host of um, Bake Off the Professionals. So he was the judge that week and then I thought it was just a once off but then it was like okay well what are we doing next week so uh, so it just kind of took off from there uh, but really I didn't have a choice in the matter yeah okay so so like can anybody join in is it an open house how does it how does it all work yeah well the way it works at seven o'clock every Wednesday uh, I, I bake a cake now I put the recipe up the recipe is up from Monday so people have time to get the ingredients. I bake the cake. I'm usually the worst. That's one of my beauties there. Uh, that was a cheesecake that I realised halfway through making I didn't have the right size tin and the only thing I had was my cat bowl. And I was like, that's bang on. <laughs> is that what it is? I was wondering oh, if it was decoration. That's exactly what it is. I realised halfway through Whoa. making it that the tin I had was too big. Mm, Ashling's nobody's like, eating that Ashling's cake. face is I going, you all right with the cat bowl, Ashling? Mm. Yeah, no, she's not. She's not, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's it. Like, people that actually do this for a living and professionally are genuinely appalled. Like, one or two of my friends have logged on that actually are professional chefs and just said, oh, my God, this is an absolute disaster. Yeah. <laughs> well, people are taking... Like, people have gotten quite competitive, haven't they? Yeah, people are very competitive. I mean, it's very different skill levels. And I think, if like, don't be intimidated by coming along to bake along because mine will 100% be the worst. Like, this is James. Now, James is one star baker, I think, maybe five times. And he is absolutely... He's just brilliant. Um, so there's loads of people like James, but there are also lots of people that are not like James. I mean, that's an interesting one because that was the week we did Victoria Sponge and he made a rainbow cake. Um, and then Sarah Milliken, who was the guest judge that week, she disqualified him because... Uh, <laughs> because, because he was too fancy. Sponge. Yeah, and he was... Yeah, he took it very badly. Uh, his friends were sending me DMs and he was in a very dark place. Oh, so it's like... OK, right, so it's properly competitive. And now, But you're... Like, you're not the judge. You've got celebrity judges that come on and people can see and critique you. Mern, I made a cheesecake in a cat bowl. Yeah, I have no point. business judging anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I just really, I just send texts and go, OK, who's going to judge this? And th thankfully, people have been great. Like, Deirdre O'Kane was a judge, Alison Spittle. 
Um, Selena from the Honeys was a judge, which was really good fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the, judge, the judging show is 24 hours later. So people have, like, a, we cook it on the, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, and then they have it until 6 o'clock on Thursday to send a photograph of their entry, and then we do a live results show, uh, and the guest judge picks the star baker. OK, but yeah, the proof is in the eating, uh, generally. But it you is. know what? We, we, we just have to use <laughs> our eyes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And luckily, because, I mean, we, we have had some disasters. There was a guy who entered, uh, I think it was the week we made cheesecake, and he didn't have ice and sugar, and he wasn't used to bacon, so he just used what he thought would substitute as ice and sugar. And he ended up using some sweetener that he had in the press. And if you know, like, if you take too much sweetener, yeah, it's like a laxative. <laughs> so uh, the whole family, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> essentially, we're all fighting for the loo during lockdown. <laughs> oh, oh no! Speaking, isn't there isn't there someone oh, who uses yes, toilet roll in her? Isn't there someone who uses toilet roll in the cake all the time? Well, yeah, that's him. Ever since then, that's what he's been oh, doing. He's been putting a toilet roll in the cake. Well, we know why he's been using yes. toilet roll now. Uh, you mentioned uh, yeah. Selena Cherry from the Honeys and how she judged. Um, we're all familiar with your, your podcast, Fascinated. Um, didn't you have a chat with her on your podcast which led to a row between her and her former bandmates? <laughs> yeah, um, like if you know the story of the Honeys, um, the, the Honeys essentially were a girl band in the 90s that had huge success initially. And at one point there was a, a £1 million publishing deal on the table. And then one of the members walked out and ever since then, like, they had problems with their management. They had problems with, you know, they were, like, Selena was a black woman fronting a girl band in the 90s. They weren't treated very well. Mm. Um, and I did an interview with her, and uh, she just basically told me the whole story. She, she, it was a day her dad was going in for an operation, and she was a bit, you know, emotional about the whole thing. And she just, she just laid it all on the line the way it was. And um, she told lots of stories that fans hadn't heard before, but then other members of the band <laughs> heard the interview, and... Um, was kind of a bit of a row on Twitter. And this was all happening while I was actually doing a show on the Laughter Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was did backstage you, did you... going, oh my God, I'm been tagged in all of this. <laughs> Dude, were you not tempted to share it with your audience? Well, they could all see it. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. then I was DMing other members of the Honey saying, well, look, this is what was said and this is the story we had. And um, But Selena's fantastic. Like, yeah. if you know, like, those songs, she was the lead singer and... Uh, she's just absolutely amazing. And the stuff that she went through at 19 years of age, I just like, I don't know how anyone mm. got through it without and remained in any way sane. Like, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't times. imagine part of her dream was being uh, an Irish comedian, a <laughs> host of an Irish comedian's hey, bake along. You don't, <laughs> you you know. don't know that, Garrod. But all of this, you know, <laughs> the baking and everything, it's, gr it's a great distraction at the moment. It's what people need because we don't know what's going on in the world. How do you feel about the future of, of comedy, about you getting back to your gigs? I don't know, to be honest, because um, like what we're hearing, you know, are things like about socially distant gigs and um, and. It's great because some theatres are really behind it and like theatres have contacted and said, look, we are going to make sure this show goes ahead and then other theatres are, are less sure. And both of those views, they're completely valid. And um, as regards socially distant shows, uh, you know, 30% of a 100-seater venue isn't going to pay a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, I think that all, all Irish comedians are having to look at what they do and seeing how sustainable that is uh, going into the future. And I really hope... Um, that when it does come back, uh, it, come back it comes back to where it was um, because I think it would be an awful shame uh, if it was to die off because you have to remember that a lot of comedy takes place in pubs where yeah. if there's social distancing, that they're going to use that space to sell drink and you can understand that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. I hope we don't lose anyone along the way. Absolutely. You know, because we operate... Small margins. <laughs> yeah, couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, it's not like people are making millions off this, an awful lot of people. But listen, we might see you open a cake shop in the yeah. future. Gareth Farrelly, thank you so much not for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, darling. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Uh, it's time for us to check on some of the